So hello and welcome back to Books and Things and Merry Christmas Eve. Well, Christmas Eve for you, it is not Christmas Eve for me. On Christmas Eve for me, I will be at work all day. I am filming this way in advance, at least like a week or two, but I am feeling very Christmassy today. I have spent the whole day wrapping up presents. So what I thought I would do today is just talk about some literary Christmases that I love. These are not necessarily Christmas books, but they are books that feature Christmas in them and Christmases that I very much love. I was gonna put them in like order of my favourites, but I just couldn't pick an order. So what I'm gonna do instead is just go through them like chronologically of when the books were written, because I figured that would just be a bit easier. So let's start off with Jane Austen's Emma. Emma and her father go to the Westons for a Christmas party and there at the Christmas party Emma suddenly begins to have slight suspicions that the man she thought was in love with her friend might actually not be in love with her friend and might be slightly in love with her and it's very awkward and then on the way home in the snow she ends up stuck alone in a carriage with him and he decides to take the opportunity to propose and Mr Elton's proposal scene to Emma is just so hilarious and awkward and oh awful but brilliant and it is such such a good Christmas scene. I love it. Go Jane Austen. I'm sure this will surprise none of you to hear that I'm very very fond of Charles Dickens's A Christmas Carol. This is a beautiful edition that I think is from the Victorian period or maybe from the very early 20th century. It belongs to my mum but I've stolen it today to show you. Look, isn't it just gorgeous? Isn't it beautiful? So I love The Christmas Carol. Of course I do. It's Dickens and it's Christmas and it's brilliant and it's just such a nice kind of feeble, the story is so good and the writing is so funny and odd at times. One of the things I do love about Dickens is his strange metaphors and similes and I think you do get that in A Christmas Carol. I'm sure you know the basic premise of The Christmas Carol, you've probably seen The Muppets Christmas Carol even if you haven't read it or seen other films, but the book itself is very short, it is a novella and it is so beautiful and so good and I love it. It also works incredibly well read aloud, so about a week ago I went to see a reading of an abridged version of a Christmas Carol at the Charles Dickens Museum in London. A Christmas Carol was read by Michael Slater who is a Dickens critic who I used a lot in my dissertation so that was very very exciting and I bought a little Dickens badge which I thought I would wear today because I'm very excited that I have a Dickens badge and the whole Dickens Museum was decorated for Christmas and it was lovely and it was very exciting. I've also seen another reading of A Christmas Carol in my time. About a year ago me and my boyfriend went to a reading of A Christmas Carol in Liverpool and the reading was done by Charles Dickens's great grandson, Gerald Dickens, who is an actor who didn't have the book with him. He knew the whole thing off by heart. It was unabridged, the whole three hours. He knew everything off by heart. It was like a dramatic reading and it was just incredible. It was so amazing. And I got to meet him afterwards and it's like, you know, because I'm never going to be able to meet Charles Dickens. My favourite author has been dead for quite a while now. I'm never going to be able to meet him, but I met his relative and it was really exciting. So it was like the closest I could get to meeting Dickens and it was such a brilliant reading. I just love A Christmas Carol. I think it's so, so lovely and good and beautiful and wonderful and just are oh, Dickens. How oh, I love Dickens. Talking of Dickens, another favourite Dickens Christmas is from Great Expectations, which you may not realise begins at Christmas. The story of Great Expectations begins on Christmas Eve. Pip, the central character of Great Expectations, does not have like the happiest home life, so his Christmas isn't necessarily wonderful. He has been brought up by his sister, who is not always that nice, and her husband, who is very nice, but because his sister is not very nice, that can cause some problems and he also has not very nice uncle that comes round and everyone kind of is a bit mean to Pip. This opens on Christmas Eve. It's not like a nice pleasant Christmas but it's very interesting Christmas and a very kind of dramatic Christmas. You know in A Christmas Carol Scrooge wakes up on Christmas morning and it's bright sun. In Great Expectations it's very misty and bleak, a very different kind of Christmas and it is on Christmas Eve that Pip gets mixed up with an escaped convict and the whole story goes on from there. Moving on to another Victorian book that begins on Christmas Eve and that is Under the Greenwood Tree. Under the Greenwood Tree I spoke about quite recently, it is a very nice pleasant Thomas Hardy read. Begins on Christmas Eve. One of the central groups in this book is a church choir and it begins with them going around on Christmas Eve singing carols and it's a really great way to open the novel because it is all about this small town and you get an impression of quite a lot of different people who live in the town just by the way they react to the carol singers and that is something I really enjoy. Moving on into the 20th century, how could I not mention The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe? I must have a copy somewhere but I cannot for the life of me find it. However, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, part of the Narnia series, really wonderful, 
my favourite book in the Narnia series, I would say. So in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, four children who have been evacuated in the Second World War fall through a wardrobe into this foreign land called Narnia, this mysterious place. Narnia is ruled by this woman called the White Witch, and in Narnia it is always winter, but never Christmas, until the children come and a giant cool lion called Aslan comes and things get better, and there's a moment where they're all in the snow, they hear sleigh bells and they think that it's the White Witch come to get them, and then actually it's Father Christmas and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and he gives them presents. Admittedly the presents he gives them are like weapons and stuff, they're not really toys, but it's still a really lovely, lovely bit and I do enjoy the Narnia series. On to another classic from the 1950s. I just wanted to also mention The Children of Green No. I've reread this this month. One of one of you guys, one of my subscribers, Emily, mentioned that she loved this and I remembered that I'd read this as a child but I couldn't for the life of me remember anything about it so I thought that I would reread it because it wouldn't take me very long, and it was lovely and beautiful. I had completely forgotten that it's set at Christmas. It's about a boy, Tolly, he goes to stay with his great-grandmother in the school holidays because his father and stepmother live far away in Burma and he's at school in England. And in this mysterious house called Green Noah, where he has never been before, he discovers that the children that lived there centuries ago kind of haunt the place. But they're not like nasty ghosts, it's not a scary book, it's just like nice ghosts who are just hanging around because they love the place and it's really magical and beautiful and it's all set in like the lead up to Christmas and it snows and it's lovely. I'm going to read you a little bit from it that I just thought was beautiful. Outside the world was most magical. It had stopped snowing. The garden looked like the back of a giant swan curled up to sleep. There was nothing but white slopes, white curved, white rounded softness with bright blue shadows. Nothing had been scraped aside or trodden on. The only footmarks were the birds round the door. The yew trees had disappeared. In their place were white hills with folds and creases in their sides. Tolly picked up a handful of snow and found it was made up of tiny violet stars. He could hardly eat his breakfast for excitement. I also wanted to mention a slightly less cheerful Christmas, but the one that occurs in The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter. In The Magic Toy Shop, Melanie and her siblings are sent to live with their uncle, who lives in a toy shop in London and is quite an imposing figure. He's not very nice. His wife, since their marriage, has not spoken a word and just writes things down. He's very abusive to her and very controlling, and it's just not a very nice atmosphere to be in because Melanie's uncle is so horrible. But in the magic toy shop there is at some point a Christmas. One of the brothers of Melanie's aunt gives her some money and with it this very little sum she manages to buy presents for her aunt and for her siblings and it's just really really lovely and touching because even though she's in this horrible situation, this horrible environment, she still manages to like make some good of it to buy something for her aunt who she really cares about. I really enjoy that there is that moment of tenderness in amongst all the harsh brutality of the situation. I also wanted to talk about a Christmas play. I love going to the theatre. I do not talk about plays enough on this channel. The Christmas play I want to talk about is Season's Greetings by Alan Aitbourne, which I love and also hate because it's so stressful. It is a kind of black comedy, a farce about a dysfunctional family all getting together for Christmas. I saw it a few years ago at the National Theatre with Catherine Payton and it was brilliant, it was hilarious, but also it was so stressful. I really struggle with cringy things and I struggle when things are about to go wrong and I know they're going to go wrong. Like, I cannot remember another play where I was so on the edge of my seat so like nervous throughout the whole thing because I was terrified of what was going to go wrong and what awful things were going to happen next but it was really funny but also really awful and it was just brilliant. It's very very good. All the Harry Potter books have just brilliant Christmases. I think my favourite Christmas bits in Harry Potter are from the first and the fourth. As I mentioned in my Harry Potter tag the fourth book is not my favourite but I do really love the Yule Ball bit. I think it's really interesting and just really well done and in the first book too I think the Christmas is really touching because it's the first like real Christmas Harry's had in a way because him and Ron are stuck there over the holidays and he's always had such a horrible upbringing by the Dursleys that it's the first like real Christmassy Christmas he has because of the people he's with because he's suddenly with people that care about him and that's really nice. I like that anyway. Moving on to a more modern book, I just wanted to talk about A Snow Garden by Rachel Joyce. I spoke about this quite recently. This is a series of seven interweaving Christmas stories. They're all beautiful. My favourite Christmas of the many Christmases in this book was the Christmas from Christmas at the Airport which is just one of the best things I have read. Christmas at the airport is just a beautiful, beautiful story about a lot of people stranded at an airport at Christmas Day. I can't explain more than that without giving it away because there is a moment in the story where you suddenly realise what she's doing and you're like, what? Wait, is that what she's really doing? And it's incredible. It should be silly, 
but it's not. It's beautiful and moving and incredibly lovely. It shouldn't work, but it absolutely does. And I just don't know why it works so well, but it's so moving, like I teared up and it's beautiful and it's just the best thing. And finally, I don't know if this counts as a literary Christmas, but I want to mention a song from this album. This is Smith & Burrow's Funny Looking Angels. This is an act that got together just to make a Christmas album a few years ago, so it is the lead singer from the editors and someone from Razorlight, and they kind of joined forces to make a Christmas album. It is beautiful, they do a couple of covers and a couple of original songs, and it's just about 40 minutes long. Beautiful, beautiful. It's not cheesy, it's subtle and gorgeous and amazing. I am very into lyrics. I like music a lot. Music is a very big part of my life and I really enjoy what lyrics can do to a song and the stories they can tell. Ages ago, while I was doing my undergrad degree at Durham, I wrote an article for the university newspaper about why music lyrics should be counted as literature. I will link that article down below if you're interested, but because of that article and because I love this song so much, I felt it was okay to mention it in my literary Christmas video. That song is called This Ain't New Jersey. It is an incredibly beautiful song and I just love the story. It's about this couple who get snowed in to a bar on Christmas Eve and they have a kind of temper pestuous relationship but also they really care about each other and it's just a beautiful beautiful lovely Christmas song and a really nice like little story going through it so yes there we go a song in literary Christmas because why not it's Christmas let's include the music so I think those are all the literary Christmases I wanted to share with you today hopefully you will have enjoyed this video and you'll be feeling even more festive I mean hopefully you're feeling festive right now it is Christmas Eve for you if not for me please let me know what your favorite literary Christmases are because I want to know tell me more literary Christmassy things I will be back soon I don't know if I'll be posting that much next week I'm not certain if I will stick to my usual schedule over like Christmas because I don't know how much time I'm gonna have to film in the next few weeks but anyway yeah Yes, I will see you soon. Have a lovely day tomorrow. Merry Christmas.